A gynecologist had grown weary of dealing with malpractice insurance and paperwork, feeling completely burned out. Seeking a career change where skilled hands would still be an asset, they decided to venture into the field of mechanics. Enrolling in evening classes at the local technical college, they dedicated themselves to learning the trade. As the practical exam approached, the gynecologist diligently prepared for weeks, putting their newfound mechanical knowledge to the test. To their astonishment, when the results were in, they had scored an astounding 150%. Perplexed and thinking there might be a grading mistake, they decided to contact the instructor. In a slightly bewildered tone, the gynecologist expressed their concern, saying, I don't want to seem ungrateful for such an exceptional result, but I can't help but wonder if there's a grading error, the instructor replied. During the examination, you flawlessly disassembled the engine, accounting for 50% of the total score. Then, you reassembled the engine with equal precision, also worth 50% of the score. With a pause, the instructor continued, I granted you an additional 50% because you accomplished all of this through the exhaust, a feat I've never witnessed in my entire career. In the dead of night, a doctor receives an urgent call to rush to the hospital due to an emergency. Without hesitation, he speeds down the empty highway, going slightly over the speed limit. Suddenly, flashing blue lights illuminate his rearview mirror, and he's pulled over by a police officer. Approaching the doctor's car, the cop asks sternly, Do you realize how fast you were driving? About five miles over the limit, the doctor admits, his tone apologetic. I'm a medical professional, and one of my patients has taken a critical turn. I'm in a hurry to get to the hospital. The rules are the rules, the cop responds resolutely. I have to issue you a ticket. As he begins to write it out, he adds, By the way, what kind of doctor are you? With a hint of mischief in his voice, the doctor replies, I'm a specialist in a rather unusual field. I'm an expert in rectal dilation. The cop, thoroughly baffled, looks up from the ticket and stammers, You're a what? Yeah, the doctor continues with a grin. If someone needs their rectum stretched, they come to me. I can easily expand it to two or even three feet wide. In some cases, I've managed to reach six feet. The incredulous cop can't help but ask, What on earth would you do with a six-foot rectum? With a mischievous twinkle in his eye, the doctor replies, you use it to stop folks from driving just five miles over the speed limit at 3 a.m. Three one Friday evening, an accountant decided to leave a letter for his wife. It began, My dearest wife, throughout all these years, you've been an incredible partner. It's astonishing to think that we've both reached the ripe age of 60. Time truly has flown. Nonetheless, I'm writing to share something that has been on my mind lately. I've had certain needs that I've found you unable to fulfill recently. Therefore, I've decided to spend some time tonight at the Grand Hotel with my 20-year-old secretary. She's a remarkable young woman, beautiful and vivacious. Please, understand that my intentions are not to hurt you in any way. I still love you deeply. Later that evening, the hotel staff handed the accountant a letter in response, which read... My beloved husband, I truly appreciate your honesty in expressing your feelings in this letter. It's heartening to know you still love me. In all honesty, I find some relief in your words about needs. I'd like to inform you that as you read this letter, I'll be at the Fiesta Hotel with one of my students. He's a young, energetic 20-year-old, coincidentally the same age as your secretary. Please do not take this the wrong way. And my darling... Being the brilliant accountant you are, you'll surely appreciate that 20 goes into 60 many more times than 60 goes into 20. With all my love. There once was a ventriloquist on a rural journey, performing at county fairs and traversing the countryside in his aging van. One fateful day, while stranded in the middle of nowhere, his van broke down, leaving him miles from the nearest town. Determined to seek help for his vehicle, he began a lengthy trek toward the town. Along the desolate road, a farmer, riding in a buggy pulled by a sturdy horse, 
approached him. As the farmer drew nearer, he inquired, Hey there, where are you headed? I'm on my way to the town. My car has given up on me, and I'm hoping to find someone to help with repairs, explained the ventriloquist. The farmer surveyed the disabled vehicle and thought aloud, I saw your car and figured the owner must be nearby. Climb aboard. I'll take you to my homestead. It's getting late, and we're still a long way from town. We can sort out your car troubles tomorrow. Grateful for the offer, the ventriloquist accepted the ride, and they continued their journey. As they rode along, a conversation sparked between them. I'm just a humble farmer, living out here with my animals, my horse, pigs, chickens, and goat. What about you? the farmer inquired. I'm a veterinarian, the ventriloquist replied with a hint of mystery. I possess a unique ability to communicate with animals, which helps me understand their ailments. The farmer's eyebrows shot up in disbelief. You're telling me you can talk to animals? Can you have a chat with my horse? What does he think of me? With a confident nod, the ventriloquist answered, Certainly, allow me to converse with your horse so you can hear his thoughts. What do you have to say about your owner? Employing his ventriloquism skills, he made the horse speak. He's an excellent owner, nay. He provides me with sustenance and treats me well, burr. The farmer's astonishment knew no bounds. They eventually reached his farmhouse, where he promptly fetched a pig. What does this pig have to say? The farmer inquired eagerly. The ventriloquist obliged. My master is a fine master, oink. He ensures my mud wallow is always fresh, oink. The farmer was utterly flabbergasted. As he led the pig away, he turned back to the ventriloquist with a wry smile and said, Make yourself comfortable here. Feel free to converse with the animals as you wish, except for the goat. She's a notorious fibber. Don't believe a word she utters. In the era of the USSR regime, a communist governor embarked on a visit to a small town within his jurisdiction. The town's mayor was eager to showcase the unwavering dedication of his constituents to the Communist Party. While strolling through the bustling town bazaar, he discreetly beckoned one of the farmers aside, intending to pose a series of questions. He inquired, Comrade, if you were the fortunate possessor of two apartments, would you not find it within your heart to generously contribute one to the Communist Party? The farmer promptly responded, Indeed, Comrade Mayor, I would gladly offer my support for the betterment of the motherland. Encouraged by this response, the mayor pressed on, And if you happen to own two automobiles, would you not also willingly surrender one to the Communist Party? The farmer nodded, declaring, Certainly it would be a privilege. The governor was deeply impressed by the farmer's apparent enthusiasm for the Communist cause. However, the mayor decided to push the matter further, inquiring, and comrade, if by any chance you were the proprietor of two cows, would you not happily contribute one to the collective good of the people? At this juncture, the farmer hesitated, his expression revealing a sense of reluctance. He sighed and replied, No, I would not be inclined to do so. Perplexed by this sudden change in attitude, the mayor probed further, asking, But considering your willingness to part with an apartment and a car, May I inquire why you would withhold a cow from the cause? With a rueful look, the farmer confessed, Well, comrade mayor, the truth is, I do indeed possess two cows. Six one evening, as a man sat in his living room, engrossed in watching TV, he was interrupted by an unexpected knock at his door. Rising from his seat, he opened the door and was taken aback to find a snail perched on his front porch. The snail gazed up at the man and inquired, Excuse me, sir, could I have a moment of your time? Without a second thought, the man swiftly grabbed the snail and with a quick motion flung it far into his front yard, exclaiming, Get out of here, you little nuisance! Three years passed and the same man found himself once again seated in his living room, absorbed in his television program. Suddenly, a familiar knock sounded at his door. He approached the door cautiously opened it, and to his astonishment, the very same snail stood before him. The snail fixed its gaze on the man and with a touch of irritation asked, What on earth was all that commotion about, may I inquire? 